All right, guys, this 32 inch long, 15 inch high coat rack only took one two by six to build. Total cost 15 bucks. Let me show you how I did it. I started by cutting the board into three sections. These will be a little longer than required, but it allows for trimming the ends later. I cut the first section at 30 and one quarter inch, the next section at 31 and three quarters inch, and that should leave the third section at around 29 and a half inches or so. Now I take the 30 and a quarter inch piece and with my table saw set to three quarters of an inch, I rip two slats. So I'll have two three quarters by one and a half by 30 and a quarter inch slats, plus the remaining board, which will be ripped down to three and an eighth inch later. But before I do that, I go ahead and start ripping down slats from the remaining two boards. I'll get six slats out of each board, giving a total of 14 slats overall. Now not all of these slats are necessary, there will be a couple of extra, which can be used to replace ones that might have a knot or cracked in a bad spot. Now I set my table saw to 3 and an eighth inch and rip the leftover piece from the first board down to this width. Next I cut this board into two 15 inch boards. I measure one and a half inches from each end of these boards and mark for a diagonal cut. I cut these at 50 degrees. If your saw doesn't go that high, you can cut to 45 degrees. These angles aren't crucial, just do whatever looks good to you. This next step is optional. I use an eighth inch round over bit with my palm router on each edge of the slats to soften them up and give them a plank look, as well as the two three and an eighth inch wide ends. Then I sand everything down. Next, I'm gluing three of the 31 and 3 quarter inch slats together and clamp. This will be the main coat hook board and it will be around four and a half inches tall once glued up. Now I glue together four pairs of two slats each. The slats will be in various lengths so don't let that worry you. It doesn't matter which two get glued together in a pair. They're going to be trimmed down to 29 inches later. Just line up one end fairly close and the other ends, if they don't line up, they will after trimming. Once the glue has had a chance to dry on everything, I trim the main coat hooks board close to one edge just to clean it up. Now there's only about a quarter inch to play with so you don't want to go too far in. And I'm going to measure out and cut this board to a 31 and a half inch final length. Now this next step is optional too, but I like to bevel the ends of this board. I set my miter saw to 45 degrees, place what will be the hook side of the board against the fence, and trim off about three quarters of the thickness of the board. I flip the board over, keeping the hook side against the fence and do the same on the other end. Now I'm trimming the four pairs of two slats, along with a single slat the same way, but to a length of 29 inches. Now I'm placing the pieces to where it looks good to me. I'm marking as I go so I know where they'll be placed when I'm ready to drill pocket holes. On the top shelf, I put one pocket hole on the bottom front edge of the shelf on each end. I then mark the back side with two on each end going into the end pieces and five along the back going down into the flat part of the shelf. Now the middle shelf is marked in the same way, but I'm also marking the underside of the flat part of the shelf for screws to go into the main hooks board. Next up is the key hook board. It gets two pocket holes on each end. Finally, I mark for pocket holes on each end going into the main hooks board. You can see my marks where this board will be, so I'd be sure to make my pocket hole marks so they don't interfere with the middle shelf placement. Now it's on to drilling pocket holes. These will be set at a three quarter inch setting. The final step before putting this coat rack together is to assemble the two shelves. Now make sure you have the correct pairs together that you marked with pocket holes earlier for your top and your middle shelf. Now I clamp mine to the edge of the workbench to drive the pocket hole screws in, but just do whatever works best for your workflow. Now I'm ready to start putting this coat rack together. I start by pre-positioning everything to where it looked good before and where I made my marks. 
There's no right or wrong, just move things around until it feels right to you. I start assembly with the top shelf and bottom key hook board. I glue the ends and place in position between the end boards, then clamp and insert the pocket hole screws. Now I'm gluing and securing the main hook board. There should be about a quarter inch reveal on each end where it almost reaches the edge of the sideboards. I clamp and drive in pocket hole screws. Now I'm positioning the middle shelf. It was a tight fit so I trimmed just a little bit off one end with my miter saw and then it slid into place. Here's how it looks so far. What's left is to paint or stain whatever color you want. Be sure to do both sides, nooks and crannies, and even the pocket holes. No bare wood should show. Once it's dry, place the hooks in whatever position you want, just whatever looks good to your eyes. I'll leave a link to the hardware I used if these appeal to you. The last thing to do is to install the hardware for hanging. Now I use these little metal keyhole hangers that screw in. They slide over and down on the screws in the wall, so be sure to install them in the correct orientation and equal spacing from the top so they'll hang even. I also use two felt pads on the bottom of the coat rack to protect the wall and to even out the spacing of the keyhole hangers. You can put some polyurethane over it if you stained it. Um, one last thing I do is put a piece of painter's tape across the back right under the keyhole hangers. Then with a sharpie, mark a dot right where the center of each hanger is. When you or a customer is ready to hang it, you take the tape and place it in a level position on the wall where you want the coat rack to be. Drill pilot holes where the dots are and then remove the tape. Drill in the screws and the keyhole hardware on the coat rack should line up perfectly with the screws. If you'd like to build a different style of coat rack, one that uses a French cleat for hanging, check out the video below. As always, I appreciate you guys dropping by. I hope you take action to either build this or something that this inspired you to build. Until next time, I'll catch you on the next video.